Hello my squishies! Welcome to the Caledonian Wool Company's speedrun version of the Ashig Beach felt along that we did last Friday. So I've sped this up quite considerably, but hopefully we'll still get all the good information that we need to felt this beautiful picture. So in your kits, if you've got the full kit, you will get some pre-felt to felt onto, a mat to protect your surfaces and to make it easier for felting, wool fibre in the form of top that you can use to create your picture. Now there is a trick to working with the tops. If you have your hands too close together, you can't pull it apart. If you have your hands nice and far apart, you can gently pull off little sections. And if there's any twist in it, it's not going to pull apart either. Remember, less is more. Next in your kit, you're going to have a needle holder and needles. So the holder just makes it easier to grip the needles. You don't have to use it. If you do, take the plug out of the end and lay the needle along the groove with the hook going over the thin end and then pop that back inside. When you're felting, always felt in a straight line and try not to bend the needle. That's when needles snap. It's always a good idea to count your needles in and out for each session and dispose of any broken needles carefully. Now let's get felting. So we're going to start at the back and work our way closer towards us essentially. As you're felting along, it's a good idea to check that you're going out with the boundaries of the frame so it's a nice full picture. We're just blocking in the colours just now, so don't worry about getting it too felted too quickly. Taking the sky blue, filling in that top section. Every so often it's a good idea to pull the pre-felt off the foam mat as it will stick to it. We're now going to take some white and lay that on top of the sky blue to give the effect of wispy clouds or a slightly hazy day at this time of year. Now take the dark brown to form the furthest away hills. We are going to add some highlights later, but for just now, just getting the shadows and the depth of colour is really important. Now we're going to put the highlights in. Here I've put them in upside down, so when you do them, put this light orange brown at the top along the ridge line of the mountains, leaving the lower bits darker. I'm going to take this back later on, you'll see. That is one of the joys of needle felting, is that you can just pull it off if you have put it in the wrong place. We're going to use that same light brown now to make the foreground mountain. That mountain's Ben the Calic. It's a beautiful mountain on sky. The thin bit of fibre that I pulled out to make this mountain, I just bent round in a curve to form the shape of the mountain. I'm going to continue this brown down to the edge of the water. We will put some colours on top, but it's important to have a nice base that helps blend the colours. You can see now I'm just pulling off that lighter brown that I put at the bottom of the faraway mountains and replacing it with some darker shadows. Again, the joy of needle felting is that everything can be changed and if you don't like something, just pull it off and try again. Now we're going to put some light green at the base of the mountain. This will pull it forward and give it a nice sense of depth. At this point in the picture, we're still blocking out colour shape. Nothing's going to be felted down too hard and we're going to go over every area later on and add a little bit more depth and colour. Now I'm just popping in a little bit of dark brown on one side of Ben McCallie to give it some shading. Now is also a good time to pull it off the mat again and give it a little bit of a wiggle. At this stage, the pre-felt is still quite malleable and you can move it about and shift things in the picture. On that right hand side, I'm putting in a little bit of dark shadow. It gives the idea that that's where the towns of Breckish and Broadford lie. I'm also going to add a little bit more height to the mountain. It wasn't quite tall enough for me but your mountain can be as tall as you like. I'm now going to add a forest to the left hand side. Taking the darker green, I'm going to scrumfle it up so the fibres are not lying parallel and just gently place that down. Before felting that on, I'm going to take some dark brown for the bottom half and some light green for the highlights at the top and felt it all together. Then in front of that, we're going to have a small meadow made up of the light green with some dark green just along the edges to give it some shadow. Remember, shadows don't always need to be black. They can just be a darker version of any colour that you're using. Now it's time to fill in the water. We're going to build up layers of colour here, starting off with the darkest blue, filling in the whole area. We're then going to work on top of that in lighter and lighter colours. Make sure you remember that little stream coming in to the left. If you ever make it to Ashig Beach, 
you have to cross that stream, preferably in wellies, if you want to get down to the beach proper. Now it's time to add the first lighter colour into the water, the light blue. A very thin layer here is all you need. You want to lie it down so all the fibres are running parallel to the horizon line and don't put them too close to any shorelines just yet. We will work more on the water later, don't worry. And now we're going to move on to the beach. Starting with the yellow, we're going to build up the colour slowly. Next, a layer of white to balance out the yellow and a thin line of solid white to create some waves lapping the beach. After that, take the mid-brown to make little tufts of seaweed. You can make as many or as little as you like. Now we've got all the areas blocked in, it's a good idea to step back and see how it's looking. Try it in the frame. Does it fit well? We're now going to go over and add in more detail and depth to all the areas. I'm going to add some more depth to the hills, putting some more shadow on the further away hills and some highlights at the top, taking this yellow, the tiniest amount, just along the very top and building up the shadow on the side of Ben the Caliph. And again on this hill in the background. Dark at the bottom, going to the mid-brown and then little light touches of yellow on the top. Don't forget the Ben either. It needs a little bit of yellow to show where the light is hitting it. Here, I'm adding layers of colour. It creates a wonderful depth and natural look to the piece. If you feel like one colour is too much, you can either take it off or you can add more on top of it. This can soften a colour if you feel it's too much. Here, I'm going to pull some colour that I've already felted down up and I'm going to spread it out slightly to blend the colour. Now I'm happy with how the hill's looking. I'm going to go over it, holding two or three needles in my hand. I've felt it down reasonably well. The picture will slightly change as you felt it down more. It's a really lovely effect. So I'm just going to let this run, sped up to four times speed while I'm just fiddling around. I'll catch back up with you when I start doing something exciting again. Here, I'm smoothing down the front. This helps me see if there's any bits that aren't well felted in. They'll start to move and shift. It also helps to mitigate any needle holes that you have. I'm now going over the water with some white to add highlights to it. Some highlights running down the stream and into the sea itself. So now I'm just lightening any light areas, darkening any dark areas, so I have a good gradient of colour that makes it pop. Have a play, fiddle with things. You can always take it back if you don't like it. When I'm fairly happy with it, I stop, put it away for a night or a week, and you might see any changes that you want to make with fresh eyes. Photograph it, hold it upside down, look at it in different lighting conditions. Thank you for joining me on the speedrun version of the Ashek Veltalong. The full video will be in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you my squishies. And if you've made it this far, I am thoroughly impressed. You're a true squishy.